sometimes you just need to need some more friends. Show me your five closest friends and I will show you your future. Some of y'all don't have money because you got broke friends. Thank, thank you for one clap in the back. Thank you for one clap in the back. <laughs> say, Lord, give me some new friends. Y'all ain't going to say that over here. Say, Lord, give me some new friends. Some friends with some money. Lord, give me some friends with some money with a good credit report because credit is also an indication of your character. Y'all didn't catch that, did you? Okay, 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 okay. Give me some friends with some good credit because often credit is an indication of good character. Check the score, check the score, check the score. It's real quiet, it's real quiet. <laughs> Somebody said, my faith makes me a winner. He said, I'm believing God to change my FICO score. He can do it, he can do it, won't he will, won't he do it, won't he will. He can do it, won't he will. You must know that faith, God help me, faith in God is important because it pleases God. Michael, faith in God is important because God rewards those who diligently seek him by faith. Faith in God is important because all of the promises of God are received by faith. Faith in God is important because we overcome every situation and every circumstance by faith. The Bible records in Hebrews 10 and 38, now the just shall live by faith. When I live by faith, three things happen in my life. The first thing is God has respect for my faith. The second thing that happens is God responds to my faith. And the third thing that happens is God rewards my faith. Now the question that we must ask here, since we have identified the fact that faith is obligatory and not negligible, is how can I produce and develop my faith? Help the preacher ask the question. Say how? Can I produce and develop my faith? Faith is produced and developed when you saturate your mind and spirit with the word of God. I said faith is produced and developed when you saturate your mind and spirit with the word of God. The word of God is faith food. Say with me, the word of God, word of God is, faith is faith food. I must read the word, I must confess the word, and I must live by the word. When you read the word and confess the word and live the word, your faith will begin to multiply. This is in essence called hearing the word. What do you mean, Pastor? Romans 10 and 17 teaches us that when we hear the word of God, our faith multiplies. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, in Greek, in Greek, which is the original language that the New Testament was written and interpreted, to hear means to comprehend and adhere to. To hear, to hear means to comprehend and adhere to. And there is a distinct differentiation between listening and hearing. To listen is simply to utilize one of your five senses. But to hear is to listen with the intent to implement what you've heard. God help me. So, so, so when you hear, which is to understand and comply with the word of God, your faith multiplies. That's, that's how you can have people who know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, but they have no faith. Uh, they have the word in their head, but the word is not in their heart. And David said, thou word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. You can quote scripture all day long, but until you live the word, no fruit will manifest in your life. I didn't ask you how many scriptures you can quote. I wonder how many scriptures can you live? You've got to live the word. And when you read the word, confess the word, and live the word, faith will be the end result. Say with me, my faith, my faith makes me a winner. 
when you hear, which is to understand and comply with the word of God, your faith will multiply. When, when you flood your mind and spirit with the word of God, God takes, watch this, God takes the reality of your blessed future and places it in the now of your spirit. Ooh, let me say it again. When, when you flood your mind and spirit with the word of God, God takes the reality of your blessed future and places it in the now of your spirit. That, that's why you're so driven. That's why you're so tenacious and, 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 and resonates such a resilient resolve because you desire to experience in the natural what God has shown you in the spirit. When you operate in faith, the reality of what God said about your future is currently alive and well in your spirit. The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Tell someone, tell someone what I saw in the spirit. I will soon live in the natural. Say my faith makes me a winner. Now faith, Anya, faith is only as good as the object in which it is placed. Faith, faith, watch me here. Faith is only as good as the object in which it is placed. All the faith in the world in someone or something that has the potential to fail won't do you any good. Make it plain, Pastor. Faith in Muhammad may teach you self-discipline, but it won't make you an anointed disciple. God help me. Faith in Allah may inspire courage in the face of death, but it won't save your soul from destruction. God help me right along through here. You don't like me. Having faith in Buddha may teach you the art of meditation, but if you want to experience a maximized purpose-filled life, you must have faith in God. Say with me, I must have faith in God. Listen, listen, listen. Faith is not just you holding on to God. But faith is God holding on to you. I got me. I, I, I'm about to have a moment of transparency here. Hope you can handle it. Uh, there are some times when I try to let go. Th th there were some things, God help me, that I did when I wasn't saved that I am tempted to do now that I am saved. Y'all ain't gonna help. That's how you gonna be. That's how you gonna be. That's how you gonna be with me. You ain't gonna be real. You ain't gonna be real. Is there anybody here, oh God help me, who's needed some mercy, grace, and forgiveness since you've been saved? I'm preaching to you. I ain't talking to all these religious folk who sit up in here lying. I'm talking about those who needed some grace since you gave God your life. There was some times when I tried to let go but he held me close and told me your life doesn't belong to you and what you tried to set up, I'm going to cancel. Yeah. Is anybody here, you knew what phone call to make, you knew who to go to, you knew how to set it up, but because God called you, God help me, not to be a blessing to you, but someone else, and he knew that if they saw you do it, you would damage their faith, and he X'd out your plans. So I'm, I'm in the street by myself. Ain't nobody else depending on what I'm talking about. You knew who to call, but when you called the number, it was disconnected. You knew who to call, and they ended up encouraging you. They said, no, we can't do that. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. See, I thank God for grace and mercy, because ain't no good thing found in this flesh. I used to be a cusser before I got to say, and I would fight in a minute. Don't let the small frame fool you. And sometimes when people make me mad, those words come back to my head. And you know how you know how you have those folk who can just put those words together. They can line them, phrase up, they can put some stink on it. I was one of them. Can put some stink of dank dank on it. But that's how I know I'm saved. And tell you, but you better be glad I'm saved too. No, for real, for real. Look at tell somebody, you better be glad I'm saved. I'll shut I would have shut it down. I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm just being real. 
and tell somebody I'm saved, but don't push me too far. I'm God forgives, Jesus saves, and he wants me to live. Don't push me too far. Trust me, I gotta let you know. Tell them pray for me. Tell them pray for pray for. Faith. <laughs> faith. It's not just you holding on to God, Mike. Faith is God holding on to you. And God will never let you go. Listen, faith does not operate in the realm of possibility. You don't need faith for what you can do. Watch this. You don't need faith for what you've already done. That's why you can't build monuments around past and current success. Because when you build monuments around past and current success, you, you will jeopardize your, your mobility forward. It will make you immobile. So, 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 so party today over your success, but keep pursuing the pinnacle of your purpose tomorrow. Does that make sense to you? God gets no glory in that which is humanly possible. Watch this. So we can conclude that faith begins where your power ends. Uh, that's, that's, a good, that's a good Facebook post. Uh, uh, please give me credit for it. And if you post it, give me credit for it. Please make sure you quote me correctly. If you ain't going to quote me correctly, don't put my name up under it. So let me say it again and say it slow. Faith begins where your power ends. Dr. A.T. Jones Jr., thank you very much. In other words, when you've traveled as far as you can go, faith is what you need to finish your journey. <laughs> Tell somebody, when you traveled as far as you can go, faith is what you need to finish the journey. Faith in God will give you determination. Faith in God will give you mental fortitude. Faith in God will give you unshakable confidence. Faith in God will give you inconceivable courage. Faith in God will teach you how to fight. Time out for passive punk Christians who are anointed with the gift of taking. There's some things I ain't going to take. I'm not going to take the enemy violate my seed, my children. They don't belong to him. I'm not going to take the enemy wreaking havoc in my marriage. I'm not going to take the enemy messing over my money, which caused me to have stress in my mind because when your money is messed up, so will your mind be. God help me. God help me. God help me preach this thing. The purpose of faith Watch this. The purpose of faith is to activate the power of God in your life. For faith has both a purpose and faith has a power. And the purpose of faith is to activate the power of God in your life. The power of faith is that it changes your situation. It transforms an unfortunate current condition into a desired future result. Miracles happen when you move in faith. Tell me miracles happen when I move in faith. Watch this. Curses are canceled when you move in faith. We talk so much about generational curses, but what about generational blessings? Curses are canceled when you move in faith. Watch this. Righteous legacies are established when you move in faith. The Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. You can't leave your child your job. And why would you want to when you despise your job yourself? That's how you're going to play me. That's how you're going to play me. That's how you're going to play me. You know good and well. You work with people that you do not like. I ain't scared of nothing up in here. You work for people that you do not respect. It's a hate-hate relationship. They pay you just enough money to keep you coming back. And you do just enough work to keep them from letting you go. It's a hate, hate 
relationship. You don't want to pass that on to your child. 